<laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I'm partially struggling. Okay. All right. So um, let's dive into this, you guys. So if you have that sheet in front of you, we're going to add a couple things to it. Um, you will definitely need your table again. And the page number we're going to be on today is... Oh, it's after the periodic table, I think. Yes, it's page nine. So we haven't been here before. But page nine on your in your data book that has all the information you need. You don't need to memorize this stuff, but honestly, after a while, some of these names will stick in your head because we're going to get we're going to be referencing them a lot. And I've already used a bunch to begin with, so hopefully they are not incredibly foreign to you. Now. The branch of chemistry we're going to start is called organic chemistry. And very simply, that just means um, living things. Organic means alive. So we're, this is the chemistry of, well, they were living things at one point, OK, uh, when it comes to hydrocarbons. But um, the hydrocarbons we're studying were made by plants and animals. Yes, and now they fuel your car and heat your house and on and on and on, OK? Yes, if you've done corrections, you can hand them in any time. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Courtney. So, um, we can actually create matter that is made in nature. We can do that synthetically. So, basically, the term organic chemistry is now just generally referred to the study of carbon-based molecules, just carbon, okay? There's tons of other molecules that have a different base to them, like silicon and others, but um, we're just going to study the carbon-based ones. Okay, because they're the most practical. So just a fast review of the carbon atom. Here's the Bohr diagram for a carbon atom showing the four valence electrons with an empty bonding place. The Lewis dot diagram reinforces it. And here is, this is called a, oh, anybody know the shape of this, by the way? It's kind of a funky name. This, it's, no, it's not trigonal because that's only, um, that's close, yes. Um, actually, pyramidal is actually right. I think that's another, that's another way of, of describing it, I think. It's tetrahedral to take every single axis. So, possible. yeah, so basically you have, um, you can make a triangle that connects the points of the carbon atom. So you would connect those two points, these two points, these, like those two, and then you connect these two those two and then you do it behind okay so what you've made is a four-sided um a four-sided kind of well it's actually more than that so, so we have one we have one two three yeah you have a three-sided no it's four sorry one two three and then four on the underside so you have a four-sided oh you can just recycle that right there oh you need to fill it up i was gonna say you can do it here if you want but it doesn't matter to me okay so um yeah, it's uh, tetra meaning four, tetrahedral um, pyramid, I believe is the right one. I got to look that up because now that I'm not so sure. There was another way to describe it. What, what, what did you say before? There's another one behind. If it's yes, yes, there's another one behind that, and then there's one underneath it. Like the one underneath would look something like that. So you have, you have four pyramids uh, or four triangles stuck together. Okay, there's four sides. But anyway, um, the shape is uh, just an extra idea. When we're talking about um, bonding, or sort of making um, uh, hydrocarbons, we just bond hydrogens to the carbon in a number of different ways and fill all the valence electrons, okay? So this is what these gentlemen made for me yesterday. All these in front of you here are um, hydrocarbons. Um, the ones we're going to study are the single bonded ones, okay? At least initially. Eventually, we can get to double bonds, okay? And then they even made a triple bond for me, which is kind of cool. It sort of stretches the plastic, but it works, okay? So a triple bonded carbon atom is, um, is called an alkyne. Double bonded is alkene. And single bonded is alkane, okay? So... If you can just imagine like a bunch of Lego pieces, that's kind of what we're putting together here in terms of making different uh, forms of carbon. So yeah, just turn to the next page. You guys are doing good. Um, the 
part I wanted to add is, or actually, yeah, we're coming to that in just a minute. So hydrocarbons, this is a class of molecules that are made up of only carbon and hydrogen. I'm not going to give you guys other elements. When you take Science 30, we'll mess around with some other, like the halogens, and do some other stuff. But for now, we're just going to focus on carbon and hydrogen only and all their possible combinations. So I already mentioned the three kinds. Alkanes are single bonded, double bonds. If there's any double bond in the structure, it's an alkene. And if there's any triple bond, it's an alkyne. Okay, these are just the names that are used in organic chemistry. So most of these, you, you know, these are all materials you're very used to. Uh, butane is the fuel for like barbecue lighters. Um, I've even seen some curling irons, portable ones that use um, butane as a heat source. But um, ethene is a super useful hydrocarbon. It's, we use it for almost the basis for uh, most of the plastics that we use, okay? And then um, ethyne is the start for PVC, which you guys have probably all heard. That's polyvinyl chloride. We actually studied that molecule in Science 30, but you guys, have, everyone's probably heard of PVC before. That's what, that's all the plastic piping. I have a bunch in my room here somewhere. Uh, it's used for um, all kinds of things, but mostly underground sprinklers, among other plumbing applications. These are the alkanes. Yes, there's a general formula for those. I'm not gonna stress about that too much because you'll see it right away. But if you needed to, N is essentially the number of carbons, okay? So if you have four carbons, then you would stick a four right there. And then if you were trying to figure out, well, how many hydrogens do I need? Well, you'd put a four right there. So you go four times two is eight, but then you need two more. And, and these guys, that um, the gentleman here that made me my diagrams, or made me my models, it kind of makes sense when you get a big chain because the two that are in the middle, or the any that are in the middle, you can only put two hydrogens on those, okay? Because the other bond has to connect to the other carbon, which are black, but it's the end carbons that need three hydrogens, okay? So you'll notice that on the ends, I guess I should show it in the video, the end, the end uh, carbons need three hydrogens. So that, that's where you pick up, you need to pick up two extra to kind of fill out the atom, or fill out the molecule. So here's the first four, methane, ethane, propane, and butane. I think these are the ones that you essentially just need to memorize. And I'm underlining the, the, um, the first word uh, or the first root word of the full name. Um, they call the endings of these suffixes. I don't know if I used that word later. Oh, I did on the next page. Okay. So, but... You need to be kind of comfortable reading any of these drawings. We usually don't do the Lewis dot diagram because that's like dots on steroids. And I always like, I don't need to draw dots that much. But um, the, the, the structural diagram, that's one we may use a little bit. And we definitely are going to use this condensed structural diagram. So the condensed one just ignores all of the bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen and just lists them. Okay. But then the hyphen show the bonds between each of the carbon atoms. So a fairly simple pattern. I think you guys have no problem with it. Um, the issue is what are the rules for actually naming these? And what happens if there are branches of carbons coming off of the main chain? So that's where we have to do a bunch of you. There's a, little bit, a few rules here to do this, but you can reference them as we practice. So this, so if you flip to the next page, this is what's on page, uh, what did I say it was, nine? Yeah, this is, what this is what's on page nine, okay? So in your data booklet, you've got this whole frame, and you have this one below it, and um, you even have a bunch of general formulas and examples for looking up things. Okay, so when you're naming, you need to know, you have to use the correct prefix and the correct suffix. Okay, so suffix is ending, and the suffixes are aim, which is for single, single bonds. Ein is double and I is triple and I, we may not do a whole bunch of doubles and triples but it's a fairly easy extension that I think you guys can manage no problem I find the ones you probably need to memorize most are the first four meth eth pro and butte okay those are not I, I always confuse propane and butane because they I, I can't quite separate those two sometimes in my mind however the rest of them should 
be like if you remember your shapes when you're learning shapes in kindergarten in your elementary school it lines up with all of those so pent is like a pentagon that's five hex is a hexagon hept that's maybe a tougher one that's french or it's close to french for me but hept is is seven octo is the easy one octane or oct sorry an octagon like a stop sign has eight sides octopus. yeah or octopus has eight okay and then well, Nona is the prefix. Nona is uh, nine, and then Deck, of course, is ten, like a decagon or decahedron or whatever. Okay, so hopefully that isn't too bad. Obviously, this is showing um, the anes, which are the ones we're learning, are all of the uh, single bonded uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, if you have <laughs> multiple sets of either a branch, in this case, it's going to be for branches. Okay, in fact, if you really want to, you could put the word branches in here. Um, because this is where you have more than, if you have more than one branch, then you have to use these prefixes for molecular compounds. And I'm sorry, they're not exactly the same. Like penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca, those are all the same. But again, not the first four, okay? So we have to use mono for the first one, di, tri, and tetra, okay? So there's a, a little bit of overlap with the correct, um, in this case, the correct wording or the correct prefixes, but nothing you guys won't manage with some practice. So just have these ready when we start naming and we'll get going here right away. So the standard drawings, um, the molecular model is what I have in, on my desk here. It shows everything. It shows the bonds and it shows the hydrogens and the carbons. The complete structural diagram looks like this. Condensed one is we use that one reference in a bit. This is the one I like because it's super easy. So we can take the same molecules and you can draw them as uh, basically jagged shark teeth. Okay. But the point is of this line structured drawing, every end of the line is a carbon atom. So there's a carbon atom, one, two, three, four, five. There's a carbon atom at each of those positions. And the implication is that we just don't want to draw them all. There's actually, four, there's, you know, there's, there's three hydrogens off of that one and then so on. This one would only have two. I'm not going to draw them all. But we don't draw those in the line structure diagram. It's just nice and easy. It just accounts for the carbons. Okay. So um, this one, of course, has five carbons, and so I don't think I named that one, but uh, if I have five in a row, what, uh, what's the name of that hydrocarbon? Anybody want to guess? Pentane. pentane. Woohoo, let's label it. So this is pentane. Yeah, that was easy. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. But it's got five carbons in a chain, single bonded. It's, it's filled with hydrogens. Yay. That's pentane. So double bonded would be two carbons. Yes. Yeah, so if you have a double bond, just for fun, if you had a double bond anywhere in pentane, you would show that as a as another line like this. Okay. So I just drew a line between uh, carbon four and carbon three, and that would now make it pentene. But I would have to, I'd have to say where is the double bond. So actually, it's not even numbered right, because if I put it right there, you actually number from the side nearest to the double bond. So that wouldn't be five, four, and three. It would be one, two, and three. And so it actually starts on carbon number two. So I would say two hyphen pentene. OK? So that, that tells me it's a double bond. And then the two says, where is it? How okay. did you draw the complete structural diagram? Oh, for, well, for anyone, the complete structural diagram, you, all you would change is you would put a double bond right here, and then you would have to drop that H. Okay? Oh, wait. No, you'd have to drop that H, and you'd have to drop that H. So there'd just be, it'd be CH3, CH2, CH, double bond, CH, single bond, CH3. Okay? You'll see that real quick when we start dropping hydrogens, because you do lose hydrogens when you make uh, double and triple bonds. All right. Okay, everybody good so far? You ready to start naming? <laughs> All right, let's do this. So, 
What you need to be able to name for me are what we call branched alkanes. So these are going to be alkanes, you know, that are simple. They're single bonded strings of carbons. Oh, so actually, yeah, we can show you like this. So these guys made some nice ones for me. What it would mean is I actually have a, so right, so this is, uh, what is this, butane? So this is one, two, three, four. What we would do is just remove a hydrogen, okay, and I would add a carbon like that, okay? So now I just made a, I just made a branched alkane. So how do we name this, okay? Because now it's, I mean, it's still single bonded. It's still just carbons and hydrogens, but now we have a new molecule we've got a name. So I'm going to show you the conventions for that, okay? And they're not horrible, but let's, um, let, let's walk you through them. So here's an alkane we're going to name. Um, the first step that you do is you find the longest chain of continuous carbons in any direction. Okay, in any direction. So it's the longest possible succession of consecutive carbons in a row. You find it and then you name it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just thinking of uh, Monsters Incorporated. It's like, don't name it. And if you name it, you get attached to it. But we're going to name it. Okay? So, this group is called the parent chain. I'm going to use that word. Okay, so the parent chain is the longest chain in whatever the, whatever the molecule is. And in this case, it's pentane. So I got pentane again. It's already been done for you. But we circled the longest chain and we name it. Now, you name the branches. And there's a little catch for this one. You name each branch off the parent chain. They're called alkyl groups. Um, that's just the, the general name for it. But the point is you name each branch with the correct prefix that corresponds to the number of carbons, but the ending is YL. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you just have um, the above branch is this would be all by itself, it would be methane, if that makes sense. Okay, because it's just a CH. Well, it's actually not methane, it's not CH4. But it is one carbon, so the prefix would just be meth. Okay, but because it's a branch, you add YL to it. Okay, and then you pronounce it methyl. Methyl. Okay, so this guy is meth. With, but because it's a branch, we say methyl. This guy has two carbons, so he would be eth, like ethane. Okay, ethane is or eth would be two, but then you add. Sorry, I switched colors here. Then you just end it with yl. So I'm I'm making the color distinction on purpose so you can see the the naming. So this guy's name is ethyl. <laughs> sorry, don't name any guys ethyl. That's not a male name, but anyway. We just named this guy Ethel, okay? But the pre, so, oh, sorry, you know what? So you can add these. You can have any, uh, sorry, if it's one, it's methyl, two is ethyl, three is propyl, four is butyl, and then on and on and on. That's probably enough, okay? Um, so methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, okay? Is the pronunciation. Sorry, it's on, it's on this page. Okay, uh, it's like the third one. It looks like this. This is where we're at. Okay. <coughs> so, that's your second step. First step, find the parent chain. Second step, name every branch. You could have, this, you could have lots of branches. Depends on the molecule. And then the last one, or second to last one, I guess we have two more. So then you number, this is one that's important too, you number the carbons in the parent chain from one end, or the end of the carbon to the first carbon that has a branch. So it's basically, you start numbering the carbons from the side of the molecule that is closest to the first branch, closest to the first branch, okay? Um, this is so we can accurately communicate where the heck all these branches are on the molecule, okay? So you associate them with the numbered carbon that they branch off of, okay? So, if we, let's go up here and take a look at this. Take your parent chain. Where would you start numbering the parent chain? From this side or from this side? 
Okay, so you guys playing that way. Yes. Because you, if you start numbering from here, you're going to hit a branch first. Here I'd go one, two, three. Uh, but this one I only go one, two, if that helps. So actually, this isn't here. Write it so you can get used to it. This would be one, two, three, four, five. That would be the correct numbering of the, the this pentane molecule. And then it sets you up to identify the branches correctly because any organic chemist will say, yeah, so so you have you have these two branches coming off of your pentane. Where are the branches exactly? Well, in this case, this would be 2-methyl. Okay, so you put a 2 signifying which carbon that methyl is branching off of. And then the other one, of course, would be 3-ethyl. Okay, so 3-dash hyphen. So if, you, if you're, basically, when you have numbers, you should put a hyphen or a dash. Basically, it's a hyphen. No, it's not a dash. It's a hyphen. It's a hyphen between the 2 and the, no, and the name. Okay? Uh, oh, it already said that in the notes. Sorry. I was jumping ahead. There it is. 2-methyl and 3-ethyl. Fair enough. Okay? And then the last one. You have to account for the multiple branches of similar molecules that exist. So you might have two methyls or three methyls, okay? And if you do, you would have to say, you'd have to put um, one of these prefixes in front. So if you had, for example, if you had two methyl branches, you would just write dimethyl. There's the example, okay? So if you had two um, uh, methyl branches, you have to use di. Finally, we get to the end. Now you put the whole name together, okay? So you list the branches first in alphabetical order, okay? So when I say alphabetical order, we're talking about all the possible, um, you know, is it meth, eth, propane, but, pent, okay? So you have to list them in alphabetical order. And, and, and you end with the parent name. And so, and that's it. Um, each branch with numbers, we would have done that already because I, I mean, we already showed you that. So hyphens go between letters and numbers. You, oh, if you have multiple numbers, you're supposed to put commas. I'll try and help you with that a little bit. There's some kind of uh, specific ways to express this. And you basically don't put spaces between words, so you just, it just runs together. Okay, so in the, yes? Oh, ha ha. They made a mistake here. I just copied it from them. So if we're naming that one up there, yeah, that's pentane. Thanks for catching that. Mistake number one. Yeah, that's supposed to be pentane. Good catch. So anyway, ethyl comes first. And so you'd say 3-ethyl, 2-methyl, pentane. It'd be the name of that molecule. Okay. So I know it's a tiny bit tedious, but I think you guys will see it right away. It, this is just the convention for naming these molecules. And so um, I kind of want to spend most of the rest of the period just slowly going through the next two pages, okay? Because this is one of the main skills I need you to be really good at in terms of I can just throw any molecule at you and can you name it, okay? So let's do, oh wait, this one's been done for you. Um, I guess we could walk through this solution and then and then turn you loose. So here's a classic one. Here's a here's a compound right here. There's a pile of carbons all stuck together. It looks like a mess. So first step is what? What do I do first? I find the parent chain. So maybe we might have a little debate here. Let's see where it is. So when you're counting, you're literally counting um, a continuous chain. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, six. I could go that way. Or I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, snap. So where's the parent chain then? It's through seven. It's what I did in red. Okay. So uh, here, let me just clear that all off. Let me do it again, but like this. So this is the parent chain. Okay, and it's not always obvious. Take your time to like count the uh, number of continuous atoms, or sorry, continuous carbons. But now you can see the branches. There's a branch, there's a branch, there's a branch. Okay, so I guess I'm jumping the gun a little bit. We should name the parent chain. If there's seven in a row, that looks like heptane. Okay, that would be the parent. And 
I guess while I'm at it, I probably should number it. Um, where should yeah, where should I start numbering from? Should I should I start from here or should I start from here? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> the answer is here. Well, yes, uh, it's this here, not that here. Here, here. So, okay, why? If you're when you're numbering the atoms in the parent chain, you need to number them so that you hit the first branch with the lowest number. I hit the first branch. So I'm going to hit a branch on number two here. But if I started counting from here, one, two, three, I have to go to four before I hit a branch. So that's just the convention again. So these things are three-dimensional objects. Like we can't just kind of um, loosely say, oh, well, this is how it is, because um, it matters where things are located. So there, there's my numbers. If it helps you, I number one through seven. So and on, um, on carbon number two, I have a branch. And this is just a single carbon. So it's going to be meth, but then because it's a branch, I have to say methyl. And this one, of course, is the same. I think you guys will see this right away because you're going to do this a bunch. So there's, there's, a, there's a methane or there's a methyl branch on carbon number three. And it looks like there's an ethyl branch on carbon number four. Okay. So I named the branches. Okay. So name, name, find the parent chain, name it, number it, find the branches, name them. I mean, I, I identified which carbon they're on. That's maybe a little extra, but that sort of sets me up to do the rest of it. Uh-huh. Wait, this is supposed to be in alphabetical order? When I finally name it, though, at the end. But like right now, I'm just I'm just labeling everything. I just yeah, do that yeah, first. But... but yeah, you're right. At the end, when you're actually going to write it. Um, so we've done all these steps, didn't we? Where are we now? No, we did number two. We did number three. Uh, we did number four. Now step five. Place them in order. So don't include the prefixes. Um, oh, die. Oh, yeah. Don't include the prefixes die or try when you're alphabetizing. Okay. You really are just using the main one. So I'm going to definitely name. Uh, I'm going to name the uh, the ethyl group first. Okay. This guy's going to be first, and then my methyls will be second. Okay. So. To address the methyls, because there's two of them, they're on carbons two and three, but we have to say dimethyl. Di just means there's two total methyl groups. So apologize for that, but we need, I need to try and hold you to that so that you're saying if you have two of them or if you have three of them, you might have like, you know, two, three, four trimethyl or something, but this is two, three dimethyl, and then four ethyl, we already identified that one but you have to uh, name it in alphabetical order. So there it is right there, okay? Now it starts to look a little messy, but hopefully this is decoding it. It's not too bad. You're like, okay, sure, four ethyl. So there's an ethyl branch on carbon four. There's a, a methyl branch on carbons two and three, but the whole parent is heptane. So four ethyl, two, three, dimethyl, heptane. And you have a, so that's a pretty long name, but, the convention is to be able to um, exp or, um, identify all of these, okay? So, wow, you guys ready to do some naming now? Let's get naming. So on the next page is a whole bunch of hydrocarbons. Okay, quite a few. There's like, I don't know, is that seven, eight? Okay, one, two, three, four, 10. There's 10, okay? So, um, actually, if you go through, actually, let's just do those first, because I actually have a key and I'm not, I'm pretty sure I got it right, but I need to double check it. So let's just spend about five or 10 minutes here. See if you guys can name each one. Do, just do the same pattern to start, uh, find the parent chain, number it, identify your branches, name them, throw the whole word together. Poof. We got a hydrocarbon.